everyone and we look forward for everyone's contributions as well. So to further commemorate um, our lunch, I would, it is my honor to you to invite uh, doc, Dr. Michael Kinpaton, former president of the American Evaluation Association and editorial board member of multiple uh, evaluation journals such as uh, American Journal of Evaluation, Evaluation and Program Planning, Journal of Multidisciplinary Evaluation, and former editor of Journal of Ex Extension. So, Dr. Patton, please take the floor. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm delighted to and honored to be a part of this important launch of the Asia Pacific Evaluation Journal. And I look forward to the journal as it unfolds and, and learning from it. Um, and I congratulate all those involved. It's such an enormous uh, enterprise to pull this together, to make it happen. A lot of people, a lot of work, and to get a sense of the enormity of what this represents, I think it's worthwhile reviewing the enormity of Asia itself. Four and a half million square hect uh, kilometers, 30% of the Earth's total land, uh, nearly 9% of the Earth's surface, 48 countries, diversity, 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 as we heard from Aki. Uh, Asia has uh, nearly uh, more than 60% of the, the world's population, uh, economic dynamism, and the future. Well, we know now that that future includes the Asia Pacific Evaluation Journal. I'm going to share some thoughts uh, stimulated by the launch of the, the journal about global trends uh, and challenges that we face together. Um, uh, beginning with the importance of what is being called the Asian century, the projected dominance of Asian economies, politics, and culture in the 21st century, a theme to which I'll return. But first, let's take a look back in time. I get fascinated um, by language. I was part of a uh, contributing to the journal uh, edition that Rodney Hobson uh, edited on how and why language matters. And Salman Rushdie has said, names, once they are in common use, quickly become mere sounds, their entomology being buried like so many of the Earth's marvels beneath the dust of habit, spoken as an author who cares a great deal about words. So I became curious about the origin of Asia. The word comes from a Greek word, was initially used to refer to the eastern bank of the Aegean Sea, but was later used to refer to the region of Anatolia, modern Turkey, rather than the entire continental mass. And given the Greek origins, it turns out that uh, Asia in Greek mythology was the name of the wife of Prometheus. Prometheus was the titan god of fire. His name means forethought. He is credited with molding humankind and Greek mythology out of mud and clay and dedicated himself to spreading knowledge to humans, which his wife Asia supported him with and helped with. But the gods, Zeus in particular, was uh, unhappy and quite angry that Prometheus stole fire from the gods to give to humans. And so the Promethean challenge is who will benefit from and control new technologies, big data, remote sensing, artificial intelligence, blockchain, satellite scanning, and what's being called metaverse technologies, the next generation of the internet and worldwide web. How these new technologies serve humankind or in fact uh, create more dominance of the powerful is one of the challenges uh, going forward. Prometheus was punished by Zeus, tied to a mountain where his liver was pecked by an eagle every day, but Asia nurtured him. And in that context, uh, it reminds us that as Prometheus found 
that the powerful don't like having truth spoken to them or being challenged. Uh, indeed, we find ourselves shouting truth to power. Uh, and the basis for our communications in the rigor and scholarship of our field is what this journal will help as we communicate to policymakers, to each other. But we do so at a time when there's a great uh, division between political views, scientific views. Um, we live in what's being called the misinformation age, the post-truth age, in an infodemic of a misinformation and a, a distorted information. And so we are at this period globally where facts, evidence, truth, data, reality, thinking is up against post-truth, fake news, alternative facts, make-believe, groupthink, distortions. And evaluation is front and center in this. How will the Asia Pacific Evaluation Journal engage in and contribute to this battle of ideas and evidence? For the stakes involve the, the future of our ability to think with evidence, to act with evidence, uh, and to work towards creating uh, a better world. So the Asia part, let's think about the Pacific part of this. The Pacific Ocean is uh, 165 square kilometers, the largest and deepest of the Earth's ocean. It covers about 46% of the Earth's water surface. It is larger than Earth's entire land areas combined, home to more than 25,000 islands, large and small. And the name Pacific was given by Portuguese explorer Fernand, Ferdinand Magellan in 1521 as he encountered favorable winds on reaching the ocean. He called it the Mar Pacifico, which in Portuguese and Spanish means peaceful sea. He had just come through what is now known as the Straits of Magellan and very turbulent seas and was delighted with his crew to come up on this Pacific uh, area. Uh, but it also reminds us then that the language of Asia and Pacific with roots in Greece, with roots in colonialism uh, as the Pacific makes one of the issues that we all face as a, as a profession, decolonizing evaluation. Much of our language, language uh, of accountability, uh, military language of strategy and targeting, uh, language of of independence and views about what counts as evidence. There's a great deal of work going on in the profession that the Asia Pacific Evaluation Journal can contribute to around decolonizing and indigenizing uh, evaluation. So let's return now from Greece, ancient Greece to the notion of the 21st century as the Asian century. Um, this is a headline from the Global Forum that said, we've entered the Asian century and there is no turning back. Uh, there are a number of books about the future is Asian, uh, realizing the Asian century. The data show that uh, currently Asia constitutes about 32% of the world's gross domestic product. And the projections are by 2050, it will constitute more than half of the world's gross domestic product. That's part of the economics of the Asian century. And there are conferences and forums going on. This is one uh, on women leaders and the new Asian century. Uh, leading responsibly in the Asian century. What's being called Easternization, war and peace in the Asian century. Um, but there are the naysayers, the end of the Asian century already being pronounced. Um, and the concern about collapse of major cities across Asia and indeed the world. And so as always, there is good news and bad news. There's pessimism and optimism. And part of what we do as evaluators is try to sort out the good news and the bad news, balance the pessimism and the optim optimism uh, as we move forward. So <clears throat> in addition to this being the Asian century, we are now entered the Anthropocene. The Anthropocene, um, is a recognition that we are the first generation to know that we are destroying the planet and the last generation that can do anything about it. Uh, speaking truth about the global crisis, part of the challenge is whether evaluation will be part of the problem or part of the solution. 
and the journal can be a contribution to making it part of the solution. The anthropo Anthropocene is a geological time unit. Geologic time is broken into units of time going back to the four and a half billion years <clears throat> of the earth. Um, and in those different stages that the earth itself as a dynamic planet with tectonic plates and the molten core bringing about changes on the surface but the Anthropocene is the movement for the first time where human beings uh, are having more impact upon the Earth's processes than are those natural processes. And so evaluation in the Anthropocene means that human actions have created the global problems humanity faces. Human actions are necessary to resolve these problems. Thus, there are things for evaluators to know <clears throat> and act on about global sustainability in the context of the Anthropocene to undertake evaluation knowledgeably and credibly. Um, the Anthropocene then calls our attention to the challenges of humans and nature thriving together. There are good things happening, efforts with new technology, with solar uh, power, with wind power, with uh, ocean power, geothermal power, with new ways of reducing our fossil fuel dependence. But at the same time, all the indicators on global heating are going in the wrong direction. Ecology and Society Journal called the concept of the Anthropocene a game changer, a new context for social innovation and transformation to society. And so we have this struggle of the human footprint on the earth in the Anthropocene. We are clearly in a climate emergency. Uh, journalist Tim Harford said, all we need now is a way to focus attention on a problem, climate change, that is too slow to be called a crisis and too dangerous to be called anything else. This cartoon from The Economist magazine shows the world fighting the coronavirus uh, as a preliminary round with climate change standing on the outside in the major bout our major battle for humanity. The Stockholm Resilience Center has been tracking these various trends of carbon dioxide, surface temperatures, uh, loss of tropical forest habitat, domesticated land, and we have what is being called the great acceleration from the 1950s into this 21st century. Population increases, energy increases, all the indicators are going in the wrong direction for human and biodiversity. The sixth extinction, uh, a loss of biodiversity suggests that, that we are in a time when we're losing species in large numbers and the future of humanity itself is in doubt. Um, as a part of this challenge, it's only fair that I acknowledge that part of the decline of the United States in the Asian century is not only the polarization, the increase of, of polarization around ethnicity, but that Asian uh, hate crimes have been increasing in the United States. Part of a recognition that the good things that happen come with shadow sides and that we live in challenging times. UNICEF put out a report on the impact of climate change on children uh, which showed the distribution of the world's 2.3 billion children. And you see where the yellow dots are, the concentration of children, the future of the, the world in Asia. Um, they have in their publication scenarios of what it's going to be like. 1.5 billion children nearly are affected um, and living in areas of severe damage from climate change uh, if we continue the way that trends are currently going. Uh, and so we have the global pandemic, the infodemic of bad information, food systems with major hunger on the increase because of the pandemic uh, and the war in U Ukraine, the economic turbulence, the climate emergency, major increases in inequity and and social justice worldwide. These complex system interactions are the context within which the journal will make its contributions. 
Um, and so the world is in trouble. Uh, humanity, at least, is in trouble. The earth will be fine. The planet will be fine. And so what we have coming together here at this moment is the positive forecast of the Asia century and the threatening forecast of the Anthropocene and where the journal, the Asia Pacific Evaluation Association will make its contribution is in the nexus as the ascendancy of Asia uh, runs up against the challenges to all of humanity. Global problems transcend national and agency boundaries. Things like climate change, economic turbulence, refugees at record levels, virulent infectious diseases, dying oceans, global cyber terrorism, international drug cartels, human trafficking, weapons trafficking, increased poverty and inequality, multinational corporate collusion, world hunger. These problems, uh, the definitions are disputed, the facts are a matter of debate, politics and special interests dominate, the stakes are huge. And what we'll be looking at as evaluators is how we contribute both to understanding the nature of these problems and looking at proposed solutions. As Einstein famously said, we cannot solve our problems with the same level of thinking that created them. And so this calls on evaluation to step up. People and planet prospering together requires management of natural resources sustainably, biodiversity and ecosystem resilience, fresh water and sustainable fishing, fertile soil and regenerative soil practices, resilient forest habitats and ecosystems, all requiring reduced reliance on fossil fuels and reducing carbon in the atmosphere. Given well-documented trends, human degradation of land, air, and sea are threatening food systems, water systems, animal systems, and ecosystems. Changing temperatures are distressing systems that humans depend on for energy, food, pollination, medicine, minerals, timber, all increasingly overwhelmed by unsustainable and ungenerative patterns of production and consumption. The growing middle class globally will come face to face with strained planetary boundaries. And so the agenda has moved from simply carrying out projects for effectiveness to transformation of systems. Solutions will require breaking down the silos of sectors, forestry, agriculture, energy, transport, health, and working with a variety of stakeholders across landscapes, sea caves, and cities to achieve multiple goals at once. There simply isn't enough time or money to pursue isolated and contradictory solutions. And that puts evaluation up front and center on dealing with transformation. The world is getting smaller, more constrained and interconnected. We have an opportunity to apply system-wide systemic thinking and leverage data to solve the challenges of our time transformation. This is the era that we've moved into. Um, evaluation is already rising to the occasion. Uh, the conference theme of the American Evaluation Association 2014 was visionary evaluation for a sustainable, equitable future. The Australasian Evaluation Society had a conference dedicated to transformation. The European Evaluation Society in that same year looked at evaluation for more resilient societies. The Ideas Conference in Prague in 2019 was devoted to evaluation for transformative change. Evaluating transformation has arrived on the agenda of the global evaluation profession. The new Academy for Evaluation Internationally has made transformation the centerpiece of its work. The, uh, earlier this month, the European Evaluation Society met in Copenhagen with the theme evaluation at a watershed, a watershed, actions and shifting paradigms for challenging times. At the last ideas conference in Prague, the conference ended with a Prague declaration of 10 items that you can find on the website. But item six called for sustainability to become a universal criterion in evaluations. In all our evaluations, we commit to social, environmental, and economic sustainability and transformation, including by assessing contextual factors and systemic changes. We commit to assessing and highlighting in all evaluations unintended negative social, economic, and environmental effects. That kind of level of transformation calls on the journal to make 
contributions to sustainability, one of the kinds of contributions that we look for. This means thinking beyond autonomous projects and programs to major systems change. And that means moving from theories of change to theories of transformation. Evaluating transformation then will require transforming evaluation. The great management consultant, Peter Drucker said, the greatest danger in times of turbulence is not the turbulence, it is to act with yesterday's logic. So we are being challenged as evaluators to think beyond narrow projects, which we grew out of. Evaluation emerged as a way of evaluating projects and programs now to doing systems change and major transformation uh, ways. This creates challenges for our methods. It creates challenges for uh, our relationships with stakeholders, with the complexity and the dynamism of the work that we have to be involved in. Traditionally, evaluation over the last 50 years has gotten very good at evaluating projects and programs, logic models, theories of change, smart goals, implementation evaluation, measuring outcomes and impacts, generating findings, judgments, lessons, recommendations. But now we're being asked to evaluate mission, strategy, advocacy, policy changes, systems change, complex dynamic interventions, community impacts, regional initiatives, environmental ecosystem sustainability, networks and collaborations, leadership, inclusiveness and diversity, innovation, scaling, and transformation. <clears throat> None of these things are projects. None of them are simple programs. They involve massive transformational initiatives and that's going to change and challenge what we do. Tom Schwant has talked and written about post-normal evaluation. Some folks have thought we're gonna to return to the way things were post-pandemic, but post-normal evaluation is a message that there is no returning back. The 2021 Asian Evaluation Week focused on transformational evaluation, moving from uncertainties to resilience with a focus on the new normal having to look at the world in different ways, that shifting paradigm, um, bringing knowledge to bear on how that work goes forward. And so the work I've been doing on Blue Marble Evaluation includes a principles of looking at the entire globe and the ways in which these interconnected threats to the future of humanity uh, challenge us, but it means thinking globally acting contextually and globally, evaluating the interactions. Contextually is where the region, Asia, the Asian century all comes into play. The word that's emerged for this is global. Global is the combination of the words global and local, mitigated and managed through regional actions. Um, and so what we are going to be balancing and what the journal will balance is global knowledge in connection with local and regional Asia-specific knowledge and evaluation. Zooming out for the big picture, zooming in within Asia and zooming in within the sub-ecosystems of Asia. At the same time, with the inequality in the world, the Equitable Evaluation Initiative calls on us to make all evaluations address equity. And so one of the examples of inequity is the inequitable distribution of vaccines. The blue is where there's a surplus of vaccines and the, the pink and orange is where there's a deficit. We see that, that Asia has a deficit of vaccines in comparison to the West. And so the challenge of looking long-term, medium-term, short-term, having a lens on how we deal with the Anthropocene with the new Asian century and do so in evaluation toward a more equitable and sustainable future. The role of the Asian Pacific Evaluation Association and the journal in promoting sustainability and equity is a central challenge of our future. As Mahatma Gandhi said, the future depends on what you do, what we do today. So the call is for all hands on deck that the world is in fact an emergency and that all of what we do as evaluators needs to be contributing to transformation towards sustainability and equity and to do so quickly. 
The speed with which things are changing is increased, but the union of scientists have moved the doomsday clock where humanity uh, is on the brink to 80 seconds before midnight. Acting with a sense of urgency then in this post-normal world, it leads us to have to face these challenges with a sense of urgency. 2030 looms large in the reporting of the sustainable development goals. And we're off track on all of those indicators. So part of the transformation challenge is thinking across silos of the SDGs and looking at how in fact they are interconnected and interdependent, bringing global systems analysis skills to those interconnected SDGs. This is a map of India of different organizations in non-governmental organizations uh, working together on largely different kinds of security issues, personal security, economic security, community security, environmental security, education security, food security, political security, health security. It's looking at the interconnections of these issues where we're going to find the nexus of transformation and matching the evaluation design to the evaluation's purpose resources and timelines to optimize use. And so as we look to the future, it's worth noting the work that's been going on in Africa around made in Africa evaluation. Soli Gariba, who we unfortunately have lost, uh, was a pioneer in thinking about made in Africa evaluation. And that's become a recurring theme of the African Evaluation Association. What will evaluation made in Asia look like? What will that be? And how will that contribute to our broader understanding? So let me close with a review of the 10 points that I've made. <clears throat> we are facing the competition and conflict between the positive uh, image of the Asia century and the threat to humankind of the Anthropocene. We have questions about who will benefit from and control new technologies and whether they'll be used only in service of the elite or in service of all of humanity. Prometheus punished by the gods for helping humanity reminds us that we're gonna to have to be dealing with power, uh, speaking and shouting truth to power. This is going to put us in an advocacy position, decolonizing evaluation, uh, finding out how we make sustainability a universal criterion in evaluation and making equity a universal criterion, connecting the local and the global together, um, dealing with a sense of urgency given time is running out, evaluating across silos to transform systems and creating a special contribution from Asia of made in Asia evaluation. These are the things that came up for me as I thought about and looked at the journal. I offer my congratulations and appreciation for all of those who've done work. Um, we're forward into the Asian century. This contribution is going to be hugely important. And so let me close by congratulating the launch and the birth of this new journal. Congratulations to all who have been involved. And we celebrate the new Asia Pacific Evaluation Journal. Thank you.